welcome to the Nokia System on Chip webinar and summer trainee kickoff. My name is Sonny and I work here at our Nokia Tampere site in internal communications. And I'm here with Juha, who will start us off by sharing a little bit about System on Chip in Tampere. But first, let's go through the agenda for today. So as I said, Juha will start us off by introducing System on Chip as well as our uh, System on Chip ecosystem here in Tampere, where you will hear also about this SOC Hub project. And then we'll go to a panel discussion where you'll hear from some of our Nokia colleagues who have been part of this project. Um, and then we'll go to our first Q&A session where um, you will hear from our panelists and Yuha, you'll be able to ask some questions. And if at any time you have questions during the webinar, you'll see this QR code that's on the screen. So you can scan that and submit your questions there. And then we'll go forward to our summer trainee kickoff with Sofia and Elena from our talent attraction team, and they will um, launch our summer trainee campaign in Finland and give some tips about job applications. And then we'll end with a final Q&A session for them. Um, so, Juha, would you like to start us off by sharing what a system on chip is and what we do with them here at Nokia? All right, let's do that. Hey, I'm, am I standing in the right spot? Uh, yep. My name is Juha Tulonen. I'm here working in mobile, Nokia mobile networks in system on chip design here in Tampere. We have uh, about 350 people here in uh, SOC design and uh, uh, my role is here as uh, APO, so that's uh, area product owner. And uh, basically syncing up it our project managers and team managers and uh, basically checking that uh, our project plans are executable and we have a uh, enough right kind of people to do them. But uh, I'm today here to tell you about uh, how we use system on chips in Nokia and uh, what's what those are about. So let's take a brief high level look. Um, Sunny, do I need to share or just uh, take this next slide? All right, all right. <clears throat> so mobile networks, uh, we build networks. And uh, you can see the basic uh, building, high level building blocks here. So uh, you can see the core network there running. We have the switch centers there, and then we have the base stations and uh, basically forming the cells or nodes in, in, in the system. And uh, you can see one base station there in the, in the, in the picture. And, uh, Basically, what it is, it's a radio and antenna. So uh, usually they can be as separate or or integrated into one, uh, like in this picture. And uh, inside the radio, you have this uh, printed wiring board, which you can see there on the bottom, and uh, it uh, basically offers all the all the interfaces to the connect connectors and uh, to the to the to the physical world, and you can see the chips there on on the printed wiring board. Those um, shiny shiny ones there in the middle, and uh, uh, th those are system on chips. And uh, basically, everything else on the printed wiring board is just to uh, enable that circuit to function so it's giving the voltages interfaces everything like that everything else is is done by the by the chip so so it has some um, quite a lot of things to do there um, let's check a little bit more then what's what's on it how to get to the next slide there all right, so so if you if you think about first uh, what this kind of base station has to do, so it has to offer offer the operation for for the, all the users in there, and uh, uh, there might be hundreds or even thousands of uh, simultaneous users there in the in the area of the base station, and uh, they are all all using it, uh, so making phone calls, uh, playing online games, browsing the web. Uh, whatever chatting and and uh, radios has have to serve all those people without the lag you know and um, uh, working working seamlessly so so the chip is the one which makes it all possible so it uh it's um 
like uh, that's why it's called the system on chip so it, it does everything on the radio functionality and uh, uh, you can you can uh, sort of uh, see the scale here in the in this slide so it's a uh, extremely optimized for functionality versus the power usage so uh, a lot of data going going through it and uh, it is it has to do do really specific tasks so it it's a design so it it does the thing uh, what we want to do and nothing extra so that's that's where the optimization comes from uh, the area is uh, we are talking about millimeters so it's a pretty pretty small die then it's uh, placed inside that kind of box so it's a little bit bigger and it offers of course the uh, casing for it and uh, the physical interfaces to the printed wiring board and uh, what's inside then is uh, is the is the exceptional part so it, it has a uh, usually a billions of transistors inside it which uh, make um, hundreds of uh, millions of uh, logic gates where we can then form combinatory logic and uh, then go into the subsystems and uh, the system has uh, this kind of internal blocks they have used uh, they have a specific purpose there and uh, and that's that's what the, what the picture is, is showing there. So it's just a, uh, lots of uh, signal processing, uh, this kind of a raw counting, crunching power for the data. It has uh, processors, it has uh, uh, interfaces for, for Ethernet and st stuff like that. So it's a, it's a huge thing. If you think about it, basically one billion transistors, well, not every of those change their state in at every 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 time. But uh, for example, if uh, two million, two hundred million transistors change state one billion time in every second, so you start to see the see the uh, scale of the scale of the system. Um, but uh, let's let's then take a look at uh, what it takes to design one of these. Uh, systems so you can see we call this the design flow so you can you can sort of see it it starts from the from the left side from the top and uh, scrolls down to the right and down so so what what it means is uh <clears throat> it starts of course from the architecture architectural design from the specifications requirements collecting and then it goes to the actual design so we are using RTL uh, to to design the, design the uh, functionality, then it's it's taken uh, from from that level to the logic um, ports and gates, and then it's then bring brought closer to the actual words. So we are making the physical design, and uh, every every step includes designing and testing and uh, verification and uh, also comparing the models all the time. So that's why we can uh, make uh, left shifting the software development there on the side. So this is only showing the hardware, but of course, a lot of things is happening already in parallel. When we get to the physical design, that means that we are actually uh, drawing the insides of the chip. So uh, with that, we get a bunch of files that are, when those are ready, it's called a tape out. And then it's sent to the fa fabrication to the factory. So actually, what it means that uh, we send um, uh, this kind of a bunch of files which describe the circuit to the factory. And when the, it gets to the factory with the complicated and uh, multi-level, multi-stage uh, photolithography and, and chemical process, they are able then to transfer that design into an actu actual physical component and then you can see that on the on the right side so you get this rounding wafer and then you cut out the uh, ASICs from there and uh, then you put into a casing you give it a substrate and uh, and the box which is into and then that can be soldered to the printed wiring board we saw before and uh, then it can be taken into the product and uh, 
just uh, rough this kind of a statistic. So it takes two years plus one year for manufacturing. It takes about 200 engineers to do it. And uh, only for the tooling and the manufacturing costs for the first round, it's about 20 million on top of that. So <clears throat> you can start seeing easily that this uh, very complicated system and very laborious. So we are in a constant demand of uh, getting new talents to, to make this happen. And uh, we are we are spending lots of uh, energy to get those get those talents to to, to here. And uh, that's why we are here also today in this webinar. And uh, one of those things with what we are doing to get more talents to to join us is to cooperate with uh, universities. And uh, we have lots of uh, different kinds of projects and cooperational things with different universities. And uh, today's agenda, uh, meaning the SOC Hub, is, is one of those. And uh, let's do, take a look at that. I think we have a one more slide for that. So uh, yeah, hopefully you have uh, checked the SOC Hub. It's uh, this kind of special project happening here in Tampere, so between Tampere University and Nokia and uh, lots of uh, other, other companies there also in the ecosystem. So I think I could talk about it for uh, many minutes, but I, I think we have a quite uh, clever video about it. So let's take a look at that instead. The CHIPS Act is a European uh, legislation which will promote the capabilities of Europe in chip technologies and chip related businesses. The European Union wants to help uh, companies and member states to innovate and be more self sufficient and sovereign in this uh, critical area of technology. Uh, currently, what we think uh, that will be our most powerful role is related to uh, maybe three areas. Uh, the first one is chip design. We know that in Finland we design the most uh, demanding and most complex system on chips uh, in Europe, and we want to be even stronger in this area in the future. The second one is photonics. We have uh, several capabilities in this area and uh, uh, pushing them further and uh, maybe integrating the photonics with the silicon in the future is a key question and opportunity for us. The third one it is related to quantum computing. We have uh, world-class research and a very interesting business development there. And we want to be part of the European family that is creating the capabilities in, in quantum in, in the future. We already know that uh, we have the world-class capabilities here and we want to be the best in the world also in the future. With the chips from Finland industry, the various players in, from uh, different cities of Finland and regions of Finland are collaborating to strengthen uh, our capabilities and position in the European and global chip business. The initiative was promoted firstly by cities of Tampere and Espro and uh, research institutions uh, Tampere University and VTT. And uh, now we are expanding the national network and creating a truly a uh, national initiative. The key asset uh, in this whole exercise, uh, creating a chip ecosystem in Tampere region, is, to, is the world-class talent. So we really want to improve the talent pipeline that is uh, created by the university and also by the companies in the region. One of the challenges we are having today is to really find people locally. SOC designers are still in very heavy demand. Companies around the world are basically looking for good SOC designers. So hence, sometimes you just have to see, so what can you do locally? Uh, we believe that uh, the experts are not created in, in, a, in any school. And uh, this kind of uh, learning to become an expert and world-class designer uh, requires several years, maybe decades. So the university company collaboration that has been already uh, demonstrated by uh, SOC Hub is very, very important for the whole ecosystem. 
the goal of Sock Hub is to make um, big system on chip, uh, physical prototype chips once per year. And in order to achieve that kind of goal, uh, we have uh, set up a team of persons coming from companies and Tampere University. Starting this collaboration with the, with the university in Tampere is on the one side really helping us to develop together with the university on the skills we need on our side to also show our presence here in Tampere for you know interested students and for sure for me right now the uh, ultimate goal is to develop the SOC ecosystem here in Tampere but also to find the right talented young people best which have already studied here which basically can join our teams. The persons that are involved in SOC Hub are at uh, different uh, expertise and experience level, starting from trainees, part-time uh, working students, then master thesis um, uh, students who are just completing the thesis itself uh, in SOC Hub. And then we have uh, more experienced uh, persons from companies and also researchers in Tampere University. So it's always important to see trainees in, in our projects, first of all, in general. Trainees in the SOC Hub was for us even an additional advantage because you know the complexity of the socks in the sock hub are much smaller than the projects we are typically doing. So basically you're getting you know a more wider experience during the sock hub exp experience and it's, it's even a pretty good present preparation for people who might join us later. So sock hub is an uh, exceptionally unique program uh, because the company persons and the university persons are working daily and they are sharing the same virtual design environment. They can access it remotely or on site and um, the mixture of talents is important. So the trainees, for example, are coming to a real world uh, chip design project and uh, more experienced persons are there guiding them. So they are learning by doing and they have full visibility of the whole system on chip design flow. So they can quite easily see what are the requirements, what are the steps needed for a SOC design. And uh, they get a realistic picture of uh, what is needed. And they will learn by participating. Even though they might not understand everything right from the beginning, they will learn during uh, the period they are participating in SOC Hub. Tampere University has started a new special master uh, degree module for system on chip design and uh, it includes all of the design steps that are required uh, for a complete chip design. And I mean by complete that we do all the steps from specification to so-called tape out. And tape out means that uh, the data uh, is sent uh, to the manufacturing. And after manufacturing we get the prototype chips back and then we wake them up. So so we test that uh, the chips work as we expected. And we have a line of courses uh, in the pipeline, each one responding to each of the step of the system on chip design. And um, by completing that package, you are feasible uh, designer for example for Nokia. Thank you, Juha, for that great presentation and the very interesting video. So now we'll move on to the panel discussion portion of this webinar. So we can begin with a quick introduction from everyone. We'll start with you, Elham. So who are you and what do you do at Nokia? Hello, everyone. My name is Elham Shamsa and I'm originally from Iran. I came to Finland in February of 2018 and uh, I joined Nokia in February of 2021 as a SOC design engineer. Okay, hi, um, I'm Evelise Suarez Pires. I am from Brazil and uh, I work here as a SOC design engineer. And yeah, uh, I joined Nokia in uh, March last year. All right, nice to be here in this panel also. Yeah, my name is Juha Tulonen, uh, working here as APO here in Tampere SOC design. And uh, I came to Nokia 2019, so not, not the most fresh of these people, but uh, anyway. 
Okay, so we can piggyback off that. And so what was your journey to Nokia like? What did you study and what was your application process like? Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, well, okay, my answer is going to be a little bit different now. Yeah. Jarkko was supposed to be here, but uh, he got sick, so hello, Jarkko. Um, yeah, I was studying in university for, for um, uh, electronics design and uh, telecommunications, and uh, from there, uh, gradually moving to as an engineer. Then uh, now I have been doing uh, project management all, already for 15 years, but um, and I've uh, been in Nokia Nokia in four years. And my uh, my application process here was uh, was so that um, we have this uh, preference program inside the house. So one of my friends uh, uh, told me about that and uh, told me that hey, we have a job that might might suit you. So could you could you apply? He sent me the link and uh, I went through that and uh, then. I got into the interview round, and uh, basically that was a pretty fast interview round. And uh, then I was thinking that maybe there will be many of those, but uh, I got actually the offer then quite quickly, and uh, then got on from that. Yeah. Um, well, I study uh, electrical engineering in Brazil. I <clears throat> I did plenty of internships and exchange programs even during university time. Um, then I, I I moved on for like working on different way different types of applications for digital designs with FPGAs and ASICs from image processing to power systems to machine control and so on. Quite a broad application uh, like amount of things and. Um, then I moved to Finland in uh, late 2019 um, for a other uh, job opportunity in Finland for another company. And then last year I applied for Nokia and it's been quite good. The, uh, the interview process was really fast. I, I don't know if it's always the case, but it was super fast. I don't think it, it was a month from, from first interview to the final offer. But it was uh, one, uh, I think it was two interviews. The first is just to want to see who I am, if I'm not a crazy person, anything like that. Uh, then the other one was more technical, just to see uh, a few things of the basis of the work that I'll be doing. And that was quite, quite great to have it actually so fast. It's usually a long process of a few months, so good experience so far. Yeah, my path was like, uh, so I studied uh, hardware engineering in Iran in my bachelor, and then I got my master's degree in computer architecture. After my graduation, I've done about uh, two and a half years of uh, work in Iran in an industrial company, and then I moved to Finland for studying my PhD in Turku University. Uh, I, st I started my a study in, uh, in February of 2018, and uh, in the third year of my study, I decided to apply for some job position in Nokia. Nokia was my first and last um, choice. From the first day that I came to Finland, I like to join Nokia, and I applied for several job positions in Nokia. I uh, invited for an interview, and... Uh, that was a nice interview. I have, the interview was with three different line managers and uh, uh, some general question and technical question. And then after a while, I got job offer and joined Nokia as a SOC design engineer. Great. I'm glad to hear you all had good experiences with um, your application process. Um, so you've all been part of the Sock Hub project in different ways. Um, what has that experience been like for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was working on the SOC Hub project uh, for about one year, one year, and uh, it was a good experience because uh, the project there was uh, smaller than Nokia project, and of course uh, you can see from zero to one hundred how is the SOC design flow, and uh, it was also a good opportunity, uh, especially for the newcomers because. Uh, uh, you can work with both academic people and also industrial people and learn from uh, those uh, a lot. Uh, so it's a nice and a smooth uh, ramp up for the newcomers, especially. 
Yeah, I agree with Elham. It's a great opportunity to see from the beginning to the end of how the how the SSG is done. You get to to see from from the um, requirements capture from then uh, architecture from the design and it, as there's uh, there's opportunity for you to jump on any part of the process that you want. Uh, I ended up working with uh, the design that's already the things that I have experience on and also the physical design part, but also in the architecture is, is a full level thing that you get to learn. And also it's a good opportunity for you to see how sometimes you work on a specific part and then you do something to be good on that. And it actually makes a problem on some other area and you see how things interconnect and it makes you, I think it makes you, you're, you're, uh, more open-minded to see how your job in impacts on the whole process. It's, it's quite it was quite interesting in that part. Yeah, I have, have to agree on those. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm the soccer cup lead for Nokia at the moment, and uh, the point of contact between between the university and uh, Nokia. So I have been there for two years now. I wasn't from the beginning, but uh, but now 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 lately lately been there and. Uh, like, like said, it's a really good mind opener. Usually, in in Nokia's own projects, we tend to have a pretty narrow roles, but uh, in SoCup you can you can see it basically all. Also, it's really fast paced, so it uh, you can see the progress really fast because our our normal project tend to tend to last a little bit longer. And uh, for me, it has been good good way to see the also how other companies do things and how university does things and uh, really really connect and uh, network with the people so really really nice this kind of opportunity you you see a little bit like uh, beyond what what we do here in nokia in some sense sounds really good um so what has your experience been like joining nokia i know some of you joined a little bit more recently and you probably joined, joined a little bit later, earlier, but... Yeah, I think we have a pretty much the same process still ongoing. It's it's getting better with materials and uh, how we run it. But uh, uh, for me, re really nice. Uh, we have this buddy system. So I, I had a buddy who was uh, like uh, uh, telling and explaining the... the easy things and all also with the, with the not so easy things and uh, uh, it's we have reserved quite well time for going through the through the like the first first steps in the introduction so you don't have to immediately you know start running so you can little bit uh, get to know the people the way of working and the tools and uh, uh, where, where you can find what and uh, so on and so forth so because it's a it's a big house, big company, and uh, uh, I, I at least value that a lot. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the the system, the system of having a body is really good. Actually, Elham was my body when I joined, and I think one of the biggest fears of someone joining a new company is that you have to go straight doing everything and no time to learn. Just just do and and see what happens. That's that's a chaotic usually terrible experience but in Nokia uh, I had uh, I had a, a warming up time let's say let's call it like that that I, I I went through some documentation I had I had Elham's help to know which tools to be used uh, which process is if I need something or if someone needs something to me if I need someone else help that she cannot help me she would know someone to to point out or you know she, she will uh, guide me through, through the normal path of the of the company, of course, the technical things uh, I know and I can get throughout time. But some things from uh, internal resources and whatnot, it's it was really really good to have the body and the uh, the existence of the material to where to to look for it was also really good. Uh, I also have a, quite the same experience, but uh, I joined Nokia in the middle of pandemic, so. I came to the office for one day, seeing my line manager and uh, my body. Uh, but after that, uh, I started work remotely. Uh, but uh, it was a really good experience. Even I was working from home. I had the daily meeting with my uh, body and uh, he guides me through all the steps. He uh, guides me how to start my 
a learning process. It was about six months, was uh, just learning uh, what are the documents. And uh, there was a, a small learning project uh, in which I quite uh, become aware of all the tools that are using uh, in the Nokia. And um, uh, there were no rush to go immediately uh, to a project, real project, and uh, starting to work. I just uh, uh, ramp up smoothly in my own piece and uh, it was a really nice experience that's good to hear um, so what are your plans for the future okay for the future i really like uh, nokia environment and i like to stay here longer uh, and uh, my plan is to improve my technical skills uh, and also my leadership skills because I, because I like to uh, become a technical leader. Actually, this is my goal. So I need to improve my skill in two aspects, technically and also in leadership. And uh, I also like uh, to expand my knowledge in different uh, fields. Right now I'm working in design associate design, but uh, I like to also become aware of uh, uh, different part of associate design flow and uh, improve my skills and knowledge. Well, I am, I am quite curious about how things work and um, I, I have a good grasp of how the, the uh, design part works and how the physical design works due to the SOCOB experience. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm not necessarily focusing too much because I have other things to do, but as much as I can, I want to know also how the, to learn how the bigger picture, how the architecture level and how the application of the, of the Nokia products work more about telecom is very much it. Yeah, <clears throat> pretty, pretty similar feelings. So there is uh, like um, so, so much opportunities in Nokia and uh, you, you have a uh, time to learn and study and take a look so for example i'm i'm really interested in the machine learning artificial intelligence so i'm, I'm looking into that and uh, that with combined with uh, with uh, all all data data collection and data mining and, uh, and stuff like that so it's uh, really interesting i have a time time to study that and uh, look into that and uh, we are also doing it so it's a nice nice opportunity and and of course then uh, Personally, I'm I'm looking into into also that how how can I can build my you know competencies what I'm doing right now. So trying to get better at uh, uh, managing managing things, uh, leading people, or uh, being better at uh, communication and uh, just uh, just uh, doing doing and searching what could I learn more on my my expertise also. So really nice yeah so the general theme is there's always something new to learn at nokia um well thank you for sharing your experiences today and i think we can move on to the q a section it looks like we already have some great questions from the audience um so we could start with an easy one what would you say is the best part of working at nokia yeah, okay maybe i'll start yeah, well it's a uh, you know i I'm second time now in Nokia. I was uh, um, first in the mobile phones times, and now now in the mobile networks. And uh, uh, I really like the like the culture of Nokia and the openness. You you get uh, uh, lots of freedom, but you also have a responsibility. But uh, it's a it's a good mixture. Maybe it's it works and uh, it stays stays like uh, open for that reason. And uh, uh, because of that, the people are open also. You have a huge variety of uh, different kind of people from different nationali nationalities. So it's really, really nice to just, uh, even beside the work, to just to talk to the people. So really, really interesting, good atmosphere. Yeah, I agree with you, and I would add maybe the part that uh, there is this big push for always to keep learning and growing. And it's, it's really good to know that you you don't get to to just get stuck on the same things, doing the same things. You can you can move to 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 other applications, to other tools. To there's always something new to learn, and you can actually go and 
actually work on that, not just have a theoretical uh, readings on the topic. It's that's a really, really good thing on Nokia. Yeah, for me also the best part is uh, culture, Nokia culture. And uh, I want to mention the Nokia Essentials, which is uh, openness, fearless and uh, empowered. So these are my values in life. And uh, I'm really happy that I'm working in a company which is in line with my values. And uh, I can be open, fearless and uh, learning uh, continuously. Yeah, I definitely agree as well. Um, we have another question here, which we can easily say the answer is yes. Um, is it possible to work as a part-time job during my studies and is remote work possible? So both are, the answer is yes. But I'd like to hear from you, what's your preferred method of working? Yeah, for me, I started from the first uh, as a full-time worker. But uh, it was like this, that the last year of my studies, PhD studies, was uh, in the same time of my uh, working in Nokia. Uh, it was difficult for me because uh, I was working full time in Nokia and at the weekend working on the, uh, my thesis. Uh, but it's good if you are work working part time in Nokia and also continuing your uh, studies. Yeah, I've only worked full time, so I don't really know what to answer. But if it's about uh, like flex hours, like working in the office or working from home, uh, it is really good to have that flexibility which exists in Nokia. So other than that, I don't have an answer. Yeah, same here. Maybe for the flexibility, we have a, I think we have a pretty nice, especially for the trainees that uh, depending on, on what's the what's the status of your studies and so so you can you can a little bit tune it with your with your team manager line manager that uh, f especially when you are in the in the middle of of uh, thesis work so you can sort of uh, choose that uh, how how much you can work in projects and how how much for the thesis and so on so it's a really nice mixture also for the for the like the free time work time balance so that's that's really really flexible here also the, the way of how, how now we have learned through the pandemics also to work you know at home office or, or at the actual office so that's really really flexible also so it uh, it's a uh, I think uh, almost everything can be discussed and probably even agreed I, I feel so all right, and then we have a question for you, Ha. What is specification? What is specification? Okay, it's, this sounds like an exam question, but <laughs> we specify that, um, for example, thinking about system on on chip. So we specify that first we have requirements that uh, what it's supposed to do, and the specification is how we will do that. That's a short answer. Um, and does Sock Hub have requirements or flow to design mixed signal designs and power management with power content with available standard power formats? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice project. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's led by actually the university where, where the, like the, let's say, the program management in, in my perspective comes from also and uh, we, we do the requirements, the specifications, we, we describe that what's going to be on the next chip and uh, then we start, uh, we separate those into a functional blocks, just like we would do in our own own projects and then, then those separate blocks start then thinking that what they will do and designing that and then it will get integrated and getting into the one, one system. So do you have a different views? Yeah, it's a fairly complete uh, project. You get to work with analogical and digital sides and uh, you have to integrate it somehow. You go from 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 the digital signal processing to uh, you, ha you have to have different types of interfaces. And uh, I think, as, like he said, a simple question is the simple answer is yes. And I guess you can go a little further on the Sock Hub page to to see like more details on how things are done i think they have good uh, like ip pictures on the 
on the website. I think it would be better than anything we can say, aside from yes. Mm. <laughs> Any comments? Mm, nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. It looks like we're running out of time for questions. Um, so we'll move on to the next section where Sophia and Elena will introduce our summer trainee campaign for 2024. And they'll also give some tips about um, your job applications. But first, let's watch a quick video where some of our summer trainees from this year share their experience at Nokia. For me, the best experience has been the team. Uh, I have felt really welcomed joining in Nokia and every day has been just a pleasure. I would also say my favorite part of working here every day is my team. Everyone's super supportive and they all make us feel valued even as trainees and that's awesome. I think I had many great experiences yet, but I think meeting new people and uh, the opportunity to be part of many different construction projects. Paras kokemus on ollut se, että on päässyt oppimaan uusia asioita ja tutustumaan uusiin ihmisiin. Ja on nähnyt laitteita ja tota, teknologiaa, mitä ei ole muualla nähnyt, niin se on ollut aika mielenkiintoista. My best experience so far has been collaborating with cross-functional teams around the globe and learning from a diverse culture within Nokia. My best experience was to see that my results are doing uh, and enhance the efficiency here in the best way. To see that uh, colleagues are very um, sociable, easy going and I love the atmosphere here and how my work um, implements the Nokia aims. I think the people have been the best one so far because I think people here are very friendly and everybody is so helpful and their spirit is very good. Well, I've experienced a really good onboarding process. Uh, my colleagues support, supported me and they, they continue to support me a lot. This is a place where there is no dumb questions. If you want to learn something, then you must ask. And it's a good way to show that you want to learn. I would recommend every student to apply for a trainee position in Nokia uh, because of the flexibility of work here. I mean, you can continue your studies, you can finish your studies while gaining a practical experience at the same time. Be brave and apply. You don't lose anything. I would also say don't give up. I think it's very hard to find a job, especially as an international student, but you just got to keep trying and something will happen and it'll all happen what's meant to be. Niille opiskelijoille, jotka tulee tänne kesätöihin, niin antaisin semmoisen vinkin, että kysykää aina, kun jokin asia askarruttaa ja sitten olkaa kiinnostuneet. I would like to give a tip that you need always to give yourself a chance and that you need to always push yourself to the border. Then you will get what you want. Be brave, apply, go after your dreams. Even if you don't make it the first time, you really have to try again if you really feel what, that this is what you want to. Be brave and try new things and follow your own path. All right. Hello, everyone, on my behalf. So my name is Elina Mantinen, and I'm the head of Talent Attraction in Finland. And I have with myself uh, Sofia. Hello, all. My name is Sofia Fonsen, and I'm working as Talent Attraction partner here in Nokia Tampere. It is our pleasure to be part of this uh, SOC webinar. And at the same time, we are able to launch our summer trainee campaign for 2024. Our campaign and, and the summer training campaign for 2024 uh, will be open until the end of March uh, 2024. You just saw the video on the experience of our previous trainees. And we really think that the Nokia summer training campaign is an kind of an outstanding opportunity for you as a student to gain valuable skills and, and experience. 
Uh, we have summer trainee positions open uh, in all of our three sites in Finland. So we have a trainee positions open here in Tampere, where we are currently broadcasting this webinar. Then we have also summer trainee and trainee positions open in Espo, where our headquarters is located, and then also in our third site in Oulu. And like I said, the application period is until the 31st of March 2024, but I really encourage you to apply the position soonest because we will start to fill in the um, positions already through during the application period if we find an, a, a good fit. Um, all of our open positions are available in, in uh, www.nokia.com slash carers and there you are also able to find all of our summer trainee positions. Here we have listed uh, an example of the skills or the positions or the areas where we are looking for the trainees. And I would like to uh, highlight that these are just an kind of an example. So we might have openings coming also in, in some other fields. So you have been hearing about the system on chip development during this webinar. And we are going to have a trainee positions and some trainee positions open also in that field. So here we have listed an example of the skills that we are looking for specifically for the system on chip development field. So we are looking for um, students who have skills, for example, in VHDL, System Verilog, C++, Python, System C, as an example. Uh, you might have been studying, for example, programming, signal processing, uh, wireless communication, digital design or verification, system design, high-level synthesis, machine learning, or logic synthesis. These are just an example, but we just wanted to list you and, and, and skills that we are mainly looking in the system on chip development area. Uh, then we have... Um, Quite large variety of system software development uh, positions open for the trainees for the next summer. We are looking for skills, for example, C++, Java, Python, MATLAB, Linux, Big Data, uh, cloud technologies, uh, virtualization as an example. Uh, you might have studied, for example, Big Data, Machine Learning, automated testing, signal processing, virtualization, cloudification, databases, or security. We are also looking for trainees in the area of software testing, automation, and integration. And here we have also listed the, the example of the skills that we are looking for in this area. Uh, we also have a trainee positions available, especially in Oulu area, in hardware design, hardware simulation, hardware test automation design, where we are looking for skills like Gerrit, CEO Jenkins, Linux, and Python. Then also in Oulu, we have a summer trainee positions in direct production. And in the production and logistic tasks are related in, in machine assembly with SMD technology, hand assembly, tuning, testing, material handling, and delivery operation. But like I mentioned, these are the kind of the main areas where we are looking for summer trainees. But we also have uh, on top of this some other positions available. So I really encourage you to go and look our career sites. We are hiring every year around 500 students. And the majority of them are working with us during the summertime. And like we heard in the panel discussion previously, we got the question about whether it is possible to work as a part-time. So yes, it is also possible. So the, often it goes so that the students are working with us full-time during summer. And then if they continue working as a trainees with us, then they might uh, work as a part-time when they are continuing with their studies. But I guess you all students are interested on how does the good application look like? So I will give the floor to Sofia, and Sofia will give you some hits and themes of the good application. Yeah, thank you, Elina. Let's move on. So what does it look like, a good <laughs> application? First of all, uh, we recommend that you will research the company that you are looking for or interest, interested in. Check if they have any web pages, social media channels, you know, get to know the company beforehand already. 
and, and then you know, is this the kind of company where I want to work? Then when you decide to apply, of course, <laughs> we need your CV, so focus on that. Basic general rules, clear structure, uh, no spelling mistakes, uh, everything could fit uh, to the one page. Of course, if you have a lot of experience or publications or uh, other ones that you want to list, then you might want to go to the uh, next page. But we, we re re really recommend that just, just one page for the CV. In the internet, there are a lot of different kind of templates, which you can use also for free. So take a look at those as well. Then always remember, uh, tailor your CV to the job that you are applying for. So check the job description. What are the skills that the company is looking for? Do you have these kind of skills? Uh, list those to the CV then. So focus on the relevant skills for that job. Then uh, in the beginning of the CV, you can add a brief summary of yourself where you can highlight these skills. And then you can shortly tell us about what you are really interested to do or what would you like to do, uh, for example, in, in the summertime. And usually trainees don't have yet uh, experience of the field and we are not expecting that either. Uh, but good way to show your skills already, even you don't have the uh, job experience, is that you can list achievements or projects that you have done in school or in your free time. So, for example, if you have done some very nice project at school, so you can mention about that. Or if you have been coding at free time, you can add the project to the GitHub and then uh, put the link to your CV. So that is a good way to show your skills also. Then you can always ask feedback about your CV for someone you trust, like family, friends, like you get an opinion like how it looks like from someone else's perspective as well. And don't forget to mention about the soft skills, uh, even though we are listing a lot of technical skills, uh, in the job requirements, we are also looking for nice people <laughs> to work with us. So we are appreciating, for example, problem solving, teamwork, curiosity, willing to learn new things. So these are kind of soft skills you can list also to the CV. And since our job application, uh, job postings are in English, please send your application in English. Uh, here in Nokia, our working language is English, and it might be that there is some hiring managers who doesn't speak Finnish at all. So then that's why we, we recommend that send, send the application in English. And also attach your study record there so we can see how many credit points you have and what you have been studying. Good way also to show uh, activity is to come meet us in the recruiting events. We are going in a different kind of recruiting events, events, uh, in whole, for whole Finland almost. <laughs> and there is usually hiring managers with us. So you can right away to come and introduce yourself. Nokia young professionals who can tell uh, about how to combine studies and, and job and how, how they ended up here in Nokia. And then as recruiters, you can ask more tips and how does your CV look and these kind of things. Uh, the main main or biggest events we have been listing here. So beginning of next year, there are where we are participating, Aalto Summer Job Day uh, at Espo, 18th of January. Then University of Helsinki Carrier Day, 19th of January at Helsinki. Uh, in the same day at Oulu, there are uh, Oulu's biggest recruiting event, Besti Päivät. And then here in Tampere, uh, we are participating Porti Tuelemaan uh, 23rd, and then uh, one of the biggest recruiting events in all Finland and in Tampere area, Yrityspäivät, uh, 1st of February here in Tampere. Maybe I can add in this part, because I know that we are running almost out of time. So 
we got one question about that whether um, the students from the University of Applied Science can also apply. So definitely, yes. So we are hiring both students from the University of Applied Sciences and, and from the universities as well. And here, for example, this Porti Tuelaman uh, recruitment event is held in Tampere University of Applied Science. Yeah. And then before we are, we might have a time to take a few questions. I just, you know, well, we want to take the opportunity to promote also for our social media channels. So please follow us, especially in Instagram at Nokia Finland uh, account. And here I also listed our Nokia social media accounts. But if we have time, maybe we can take still a few questions. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the great presentation to both of you. We've gotten a few questions that we could ask. First, we have, do you have any advice for someone who would want to join Nokia as a trainee? Any advice? Uh, first of all, go and check our just newly launched summer training campaign for 2024. So the career side is the place where you are able to find our postings and, and openings. But then, like Sophia mentioned, it's a good way also to come and meet us in the university recruitment fair. So there you are able to meet us face to face and you have a chance to discuss um, with the hiring managers and us as a recruiter. So I think at least those, those two are really good tips. Yes. And does the CV have to be in English? You already answered that. Yes, it does have to be in English. <laughs> yeah, the only exception is that for the Oulu direct production uh, summer training processes, then you might also uh, write your CV in Finnish. But otherwise, we recommend to write it in English. And what was the application deadline again? It was the end of March, so the 31st of March 2024. And I think that's everything that we have time for today. Thank you very much for joining to everybody. And thank you, Elena and Sofia, and as well to Yuha and our panelists um, for today. And we will hopefully see you at some of our recruitment events in the future. And good luck for the job hunting for next summer training processes.